السلام علیکم گائز دس از می شہریار مبارک آن مائی چینل حسن علی ود انادر ایپیسوڈ آف مائی ٹیک ایز یوزل آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ غزہ ان اے بٹ بٹ آئی ول اسٹارٹ فرام دی ایرانین وائلیشن آف پاکستان ایئر اسپیس وائلیشن آف پاکستان سوورینٹی ایز دے ہیو کنڈکٹیڈ ڈرون اسٹرائکس ان پنجگور بلوچستان پروونس آف پاکستان لارجسٹ پروونس بائی دی لینڈ ماس ان بلوچستان Punjgur, they have hit, as according to them, they have, they have hit Jeshul Adal, a group, a terrorist, Sunni terrorist ethnic Baloch group, which is working on the both sides of the border. It's uh, act- actually based in Siyastan, Balochistan as well, the part where the, in uh, Iran, where the Baloch majority uh, ethnic city live, lives, it's Siyastan, Iran, and the Baloch, as Balochistan and Pakistan are in majority in that province. And it's a Sunni Salafit group which is working for the cessation of Siyastan to the Balochistan or as uh, the great game goes on or as the rumors or as the theory goes on that uh, people in India and Iran, especially in Siyastan, those Baloch who have been sponsored by India as well a couple of times or from 1947 onwards that they are working for the greater Balochistan in case as god forbid uh, allah pa- allah pak forbids the moment if pakistan breaks and balochistan went away separately so they can break siyastan from the iran as well and can combine the both provinces and make a greater balochistan a separate country just for the baloch ethnicity just for the baloch people because uh, in siyastan the baloch living in siyastan are actually uh, very suppressed because their culture their language is banned they can't even speak balochi they can't even speak balochi in siyastan which is the majority province of baloch in iranian side but I- irgc did not only attack pakistan they have also bombed in the uh, iraqi kurd kurdish administrative part of iraq where they bombed a base uh, they also hit in syria so it is not the only strike in pakistan but in pakistan it has been an unprovoked attack because from the kurdistan land, from the kurd land from the iraq uh, iraq administrative kurd kurdistan uh, kurd land could uh, have been used before to carry out terrorist activities against iran and the parts of syria it's also been used against the tehran as it is surprising that iran did not ask pakistan to conduct this operation they bombed the pakistani foreign office claims that there was no base of jeshul adal was hit it was the poor civilian the poor pakistani balochis were killed according to some reports five person died three children and two people but according to few others report by the news uh, uh, news media that two children died in that drone strike according to the iranian foreign minister in davos he said that we can't compromise on our security and this jeshul adal is conducting terrorist activity from the pakistani land it is really surprising that uh, iran has himself has too many proxies working in middle east houthis hezbollah some few, few, few say islamic jihad hamas is not the iranian based proxy they did have good relationships with iran but hamas is uh, more of uh, the uh, like minded or the ideologic ideologically close to the uh, muslim brotherhood so they can't be called proxy but hezbollah islamic jihad houthis they are iranian backed usa also carried out the third strike or the third time they have bombed different locations in yemen this is not a shia sunni issue which triggers on or the debate can go there it's more like that iran by attacking kurdish uh, iraqi administrative kurd, kurd area and syria and after that attacking pakistan without any provocation without any uh, the consultation or without any informing anything or without telling the pakistani forces to ca- conduct the operation they did themselves pakistan take it very seriously although that pakistan 
uh, didn't reply militarily, but the ISPR has said or the Foreign Office has said that Pakistan reserved the right to answer. Pakistan have called their ambassador back from Tehran and send Irani ambassador back to its country. And in a statement, they said that in uh, near future, it seems impossible that Iranian ambassador will come back to Pakistan or Pakistani High Commissioner will go back to Tehran. Pakistan have also cancelled many high-level trips of the different delegates of the different delegations from higher delegations from Pakistan to Tehran and also asked the Iranian delegations to not to come to Pakistan. The war or the escalation can happen anytime. There also are rumors that this attack happened on the behest of India or the Modi. But don't know how true this rumor is. But it is really surprising for us that Iran conducted strike in a Muslim friendly country because Pakistan and Iran did have issues, but they were never cross uh, a violation of both countries uh, respective airspaces by both countries. So it is a bit surprising that Iran attacked Pakistan. If we move on, in Houthis, as Yemen have been bombed third time by the United States, and Houthis have stopped another ship which is bound to Israel, as uh, Houthis said that they will continue to resist or stop the vessels bound to Israel or owned by Israeli owners. Gaza bombing continues as IDF continuously bomb Khan Yunus area and their now focus is on Khan Yunus area. And there was a video posted by a Palestinian journalist, uh, what her name is, journalist uh, Basin Ouda. She said that last working hospital in Khan Yunus or in the hall of the Gaza Strip, Al Nasser, is besieged. People are evacuating, doctors are leaving. Thousands of injured people are alone in this hospital, like many other hospitals, or let's say eight or nine working, seven or eight working hospitals. People are in fear of their life because continuously bombardment across the strip and focus on Khan Yunus and southern parts of uh, uh, Gaza. It shows that Israel wants to clean or wipe out whole of Gaza from and the people of Gaza. The bombardment continues. As the communication blackout, she did post and tell the world that the things or the situation in Gaza is very bad. There are also a uh, uh, theory or a uh, thing going on or a talks happening that Israel could let the food and aid and medical supplies enter to Gaza Strip in exchange for the uh, Hostages released by Hamas. Let's see where it goes. As the food director, UN food director um, uh, pro uh, program, food director program had UN, he said that everyone is hungry in Gaza. Food is shortage. There is famine like situation in Gaza. There is not enough food. There is not enough water. There is not enough medical equipment. People are dying in Gaza. Situation is desperate. It's disastrous and it, it could be turned into a human catastrophe because Israel is using starvation as a weapon of war and it's a war crime. They are killing children, they are killing elderly men, they are killing women, they are destroying every building whether it's a hospital, whether it's a residential complex, whether it's a commercial complex, they are just bombing right, left and center and they are destroying Gaza. They are wiping out the people of Gaza. More than 24,000, It almost now 24,500 or 600 people are died in Gaza. 61,000 plus people are injured in Gaza. More than 25,000 children are orphaned in Gaza. Situation is bad in Gaza. People are dying. In West Bank attacks are continuing. More than 500 people in West Bank have been killed since the 7th of October by the Israeli forces. 94 houses have been uh, destroyed by the Israeli forces and illegal settlers. 
more than 602 people's are displaced including 62 children the situation is bad in gaza and it's across the occupied territories it's not just only to the west bank it's in hebron it's janine in ramallah in jerusalem everywhere everywhere the situation is bad the plight of palestinian people are bad the situation is out of hand there was a motion by bernie sanders in u.s congress <coughs> in, U in u.s congress where he said he proposed the resolution that biden administration shall tell the u.s senate that the arms provided to the israel are how the israeli forces are using the majority of the senate opposed that resolution but only four people resolution also calls for the ceasefire 11 people actually voted in favor of bernie sanders that motion should hold only four of them in that 11 as well call for the ceasefire and join bernie sanders voice for the ceasefire but majority of the u.s senate didn't vote for this neither for ceasefire neither they want to know how israel is using the weapon or ammunition provided by united states of america or by this biden administration on the people of gaza or across the palestinian occupied territories situation is bad in gaza and a famous ice cream band uh, brand ben and jerry's in america calls for the ceasefire in gaza situation is bad in gaza people are dying left and center in gaza in the end <coughs> the british prime minister rishi sunak said in a question asked by a muslim labor mp zahra sultana where she said when this government will going to call for the de-escalation of uh, this de-escalation of gaza war or the ceasefire of the gaza war in response the british prime minister He's a Hindu. He's a practicing Hindu. He said whether the lady who, the respected lady who asked the question, will she say Hamas and Houthis to de-escalate and stop? It was his answer to the question where she asked specifically when will the British government and the prime minister of that government, the conservative party's leader, Rishi Sonak, will ask for the ceasefire in Gaza, for the de-escalation of the war. And he replied, what? Will the respected lady ask the Houthis and Hamas to de-escalate? It shows the Islamophobic is in Europe. The Islamophobia is in every part of Western society. They claim to be seculars. They claim to be liberals. They claim to be democratic. But in reality, they are the most biased people when it comes to Islam and Muslims. Nas Shah, another Labour MP, when she asked the question and put the notice to British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak that will he retort from his words or will he retract what he said, she asked, she asked for the apology. But in response, he get up and again repeat the same language but now this time around he said i asked everyone and the labor party uh, conservative party's mp andrew percy something his name is he was from uh, gorals uh, I'm, I'm forgetting gary's and gorals i I'm, couldn't forget in remember his name of his constituency he said the same things that too many people he was actually referring to the muslim mps from across the aisle of both conservative party and labor party mostly labor parties because labor parties Nas Shah, Zara Sultana, uh, Kamran Hussain, Afzal Khan and few others prominent Muslim leaders they were the uh, were English people or the Christian um, of the labor party then conservative uh, leaders from the uh, uh, English origin leaders or the uh, Englishmen across the aisle Englishmen and women they also asked for the ceasefire, but in the prominence, these Muslim MPs, which I have named, like Zara Sultana, Nas Shah, uh, Afzal Khan, uh, 
Atif Hussain or Kamran Hussain, if I'm uh, uh, taking his name wrong. These three of Opas who are the member of the shadow cabinet of KS Chama, the Labour Party leaders, they asked or they were the vocal voice when there were debates and when there were resolutions in the British Parliament or House of Commons for asking for the ceasefire. The same Conservative Party MP, the Andrew Percy said that too many in this house, he referring from, to the British Parliament uh, in, in the presence of the British Prime Minister and the opposition leader K.S. Chama. He refers that too many people let it go scot free and support the terrorists. The Islamic rants or anti-Islamic rants, it's common in uh, the Western world. It is common in Western societies. It is common across Europe. It's common across the English land. It is common across the Canadian and American land as well. It is common across the world. But no time I remember in the presence of British Prime Minister or uh, the British Prime Minister himself say these Islamophobic rants or these Islamophobic tropes and targeting the MP, a Muslim MP, a woman Muslim MP who asked, will you ask, will you call for the Gaza ceasefire? Islamophobia is there in West and there is no denying of it. <coughs> Racist rants are the common things. Zara Sultan herself in an interview to an online uh, a news portal, Nawa Media, a British news portal, she said that she was called to go back to Tanzania because she was black. She was, they think that she was black, she is from Africa. But these sort of Islamophobic grants by the British government, by the current British establishment, it shows the mindset of West and the Western democratic leaders. And it also shows where this world is going. I hope there is no escalations between Iran and Pakistan because what Iran have done, it is condemnable as they have violated a friendly country's airspace, a Muslim brother country's airspace. Uh, it is a betrayal by Iran. There were talks of war between Afghanistan and Pakistan, but now it seems like Iran and Pakistan could go to the loggerheads. I hope war ends everywhere, war ends in Gaza, war ends wherever there is war. Long live Islam, long live the Muslim Brotherhood, long live the people of Palestine, long live the Palestinian cause, long live the freedom movement of Palestine, and long live the Muslim Ummah, Allah Hafiz.